So an activist seems to me to be someone who hypothetically advocates for the oppressed, which is already a moral danger. It's because like, what the hell made you advocate for the oppressed? Did they elect you? It's, why are you the spokesman? And what gives you that moral virtue? So, you know, those are major questions. But also, it, it comes with it this temptation, because if you're an activist, you're almost always against something. You're always identifying the problem with the world uh, as being something that some other person who isn't good like you is doing. And then what we do is we present young people in high school and in university with the notion that, well, there's, if you really care about the world, there's nothing more honorable than you could do, that you could possibly do, than to become an activist. And I really kind of think that in some sense, there is almost no lower calling than activism. I'm talking today to Amala Epinobi, she was a radical leftist, leftist activist as a young person and um, has undergone quite a political and philosophical transformation in recent years. And so we're going to talk to her about that and about her work with PragerU today. Her mother is a left-wing pundit who works on professional fundraising. Amala grew up fully believing in leftist ideology before having a radical change in thought. Recognizing the hate coming from those around her who were tolerant, she made a hard choice to confront her bosses in a leftist organization on these thoughts and was not only shut down, but belittled by being told, you don't even realize how oppressed you are. And this was the final straw. From here, she left her workplace, dived into her own education on the founding fathers and the institutions as they were originally designed in America and how social media works. Using these new skills in tandem, she launched a conservative TikTok channel of all things and found herself going viral regularly. It wasn't long after she joined PragerU as the host of her own show. Raised in a far left activist household, 22 year old Amala Epinobi was once a student organizer for the left. Unanswered questions and a search for the truth led her to a complete ideological transformation. Passionately sharing her new conservative values online, Amala became a viral social media sensation. She is now the host of PragerU's popular show, Unapologetic with Amala. She inspires millions of young people every day to discover the truth, defend their values, and lead better lives. I met her at a PragerU gala about a month ago. It's December 2022 at the moment, so a month ago would have put us in November, I think that's about right, and uh, I was there talking to Dennis Prager, and she uh, had a speech after me, and it was really quite compelling, and I thought it would be very interesting to talk to Amla on my podcast as a consequence. Um, she's quite young, she's made a bit of a splash online, uh, maybe more than a bit, and so when I listened to her talk, I thought, well, here's someone who seems to have a clue and who's probably going somewhere. So let's find out exactly who she is. And so that's the plan today. I want to get to know her a little bit and to walk all of you through it. So let's start with what you're doing now. You're working for PragerU. And that's a very evil thing to do, as you know full well. And so I'm quite curious about how, you, how that came about. And how old are you? I'm, I'm 22 at the moment. <laughs> Right. Okay. 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 So you're not you're not a pup. You just but you're out of that. You're out of puphood a little bit, anyways. Yeah. So okay. How did you how did it come to be? How did you come to start doing uh, videos for Prager? Tell me exactly what you're doing at Prager U. Sure. Yeah. So at the moment, I my job title is Prager U personality, uh, which I guess assumes oh, yeah. that I have some sort of personality. <laughs> Um, and, and what that involves now is I do podcasting and, and social media content and just talk about cultural issues, today's politics and news from a, a young person's perspective and particularly a young conservative leaning perspective. So that's what I do now. And Prager, you found me because I started making videos on the Internet about a journey that I had from being what I consider to be a really radical leftist to a now sort of right of center person. Right, right. So you're a conservative personality. That, that, those two words haven't gone together that well during the entire span of my life. So that's kind of a funny thing altogether. And so how often are you making, how often are you making videos for Prager? 
Every single day we put out content, so uh, we're constantly staying on our toes and keeping up with everything that's going on in the world. And uh, that, that's, that's our, our daily life right now, is just looking at what's happening, looking at the conversations that people are having and what's trending, and then hopefully giving a reasonable perspective on it. Great, so how much, how much content are you producing every day? Uh, at least, uh, I would say, three short form videos that are about 60 seconds long, as well as one long form video that will be anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. And then we do a live podcast on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays that goes for about an hour. Oh yeah, okay, okay. And on the, the short form, so those are about 60 seconds long? Yeah, yep, we'll pick a trending topic or a news story and then just give you a 60 second rundown of what's happening as well as a, a little bit of opinion on it. Right, and so what platforms are you using for the short forms? Everything, we're on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, uh, you name it, we're there. Are you on TikTok? Yes, TikTok. I have an, an up and down relationship with TikTok as I get banned probably every other week for the yeah. content that I put oh, out. Well, and congratulations. Being banned by the Chinese communists is always a really good yes. thing. Yeah, yeah. It's we should return the favor in spades. Yes. I agree. Yes. Yes, definitely. And so where, where do you have the biggest following? My biggest following is now on, on YouTube. My, my TikTok account is currently banned. That would have been my biggest following at about 640K, I believe. But now we've, we've reached that on YouTube. Oh, well, congratulations. And how fast are you growing on YouTube? Well, we started our channel, I want to say, about in April of this year. So that's how, how quickly. It's been about, been about nine months. Ah, and you said you were making videos before Prager picked you up. And w yes. what platforms were you using for those videos? When did you start doing that? I started out on TikTok of all platforms, and I want to oh, yeah. say I started there at the end of 2019. And I, in a matter of months, managed to amass a few hundred thousand followers because I think I was speaking mm. to a perspective that people weren't used to on the platform. And I have a particular look being a biracial female. I think that's not to be ignored in it having a factor in me growing so quickly on these platforms. But TikTok is where things really started to take off. Yeah, so what do you think you were doing that made what you were saying relevant and vital to people? I mean, you, you pointed to a couple of things, hey, your youth and your biracial status. And I suppose the, the combination of those two things and the fact that you were offering a counter narrative, but that doesn't seem to me to be enough. Like you, when, when you see that kind of explosive growth across multiple platforms, you, you have to think that you've, you're saying something in the right way for the moment. And so what is it about what you're doing that is attracting attention. Is it mostly positive attention? Are you getting a lot of, are, are you getting a lot of trouble? And, and yeah. so that would also be in your personal life as well as your on life, online life, because those aren't the same thing. So what are you doing right? <laughs> what am I doing right? That's a big question. Uh, you know, when I started out on the platform, it was just a leisurely thing. I unfortunately had downloaded TikTok as a form of entertainment and started scrolling through this curated for you page, which of course takes in your demographics and realizes somewhat of who you are as a person and then feeds you videos that they think you'll like. And the videos that I was being fed were just a lot of leftist radical ideology really reducing me down to my gender, my race, talking about how pivotal it was that I was to be a member of the feminist movement or of Black Lives Matter. And I saw that and, and thought, wow, it's very interesting that this app took in my demographics and this is what it fed me. I wonder if there's anybody right. saying anything contrary to this. So one day I took out my phone and I filmed a video talking about how I used to be a former leftist and now I'm on the other side of things and and that part of me sort of died off but spoke to it a little bit and my videos started taking off purely due to hatred people were very upset Ooh. at me oh, yeah. espousing these views and i got every single name you can think of uh for what i was doing and then with that oh that's fun came yeah yeah it was it was Something that I expected by virtue of having been on that side of things already, I knew what I was going to walk into with that. But with that came just this wave of support of people mm. seeing the hate that I was getting and wanting to, to be a part of, of the, the counter narrative of that.